Hi everyone, I'm Carla. And I'm Lanes. And together, we're the Aft Deck. Where each week we recap an episode of Bravo's hit reality TV show, Below Deck. Cheers. Cheers. Have you had any wine this week? <laughs> There's a bear shit in the woods. I haven't. Oh, hello, by the way. Hi, Lanes. Hi, Carla. <laughs> Why are you? <laughs> yeah, good. So tonight it's uh, Below Deck Med Season 8, Episode 10, Dirty Laundry. Mm. And in this episode, it's a one-day charter and we meet the new stew. Max's Eiffel Tower returns and Kyle still can't find his happy place despite Nat leaving and takes issue with the chef. Any shout-outs? NYC Sushi, thank you so much for subscribing. We are so excited. We're actually working on a Patreon with some bonus content for you and any other subscribers, so stay tuned. I'll be in touch. Also, thanks to Faye who bought us some coffees. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. It's 9.45, 26 hours before charter. Kyle and Captain Sandy are in the bridge. Yeah. We all know by now Kyle's not fired. I know, but, like, I just loved it. I loved the chat and, like, you know, Sandy's giving Kyle the bloody one too, the power. Wow, the take oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's just sitting there. It's the only time you ever see him silent. Mm. He doesn't know how to take it. No. She just says, I'm just going to put you on the dock quick smart. If anyone else comes to me with any of this, he can't even say anything. She just goes, thank you, I'm finished. <laughs> Mic drop. She's the, She's angry. Like you can tell. And I think the only reason why he wasn't fired is because it would have been just hideous to get more staff. She couldn't have fired him then. No. No way. Carl leaves, walks off with, I don't want to carry on. No, straight down the stairs to the cabin. He's packing. Yeah, okay. All How right. long did that last, Lanes? Well, Toomey goes into Carl's cabin and asks if he went up. Did you go up to Sandy? Yeah, I'm resigning. Yep. He's upset that he was called the common denominator. That's what got him yeah. out of all of that. And I'm like, wow, okay. Toomey tells him, blah, 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 don't leave, blah, blah, blah. And just like that, just as quickly as he'd folded one shirt, he's now not resigning anymore. Okay, I'll help you. Okay, I'll stay. Yeah. It was in that moment that I was like, that's you to a T. Did you say last week flips on a dime or something? Yep. Was that the right one? <laughs> Turns on a dime? <laughs> that was the quickest turnaround I've ever seen. Yep. Now, oh, I've got a problem. It's 11 a.m., 25 hours before charter. Now, let's remember what my time check was at the beginning of this episode. 9.45 a.m. 26 hours before charter. Are they getting it wrong again? Yes. You need to apply for the editing job <laughs> at Bravo Below Deck. They're not adding up. Like, in between this time... Lara talks to Max and tells him not to leave because now Max is thinking of leaving. Yeah, they don't want him to go. He's kind. Of, he's, he's pretty much told everyone except Sandy. And Lara encourages him, look, you've got to tell Sandy because otherwise you're going to leave us in the lurch. Like, do the right thing if you're going to leave and tell her. Yeah, like give her time. He's a bit scared. He well, yeah, you would be. He doesn't want to tell her. And also I was like, if you do tell her, tell her the whole reason. Yes. Like tell her that it's because of Kyle. Mm, he doesn't, though, when he tells her later, does he? So then the Captain Sandy's uh, Norma rings. She's got good news, has Norma. Shout out to Norma. <laughs> There's a stew coming. Yeah. And Sandy already knows. She's like, you can't be picky. Two weeks left of the season. You've got to take whoever is coming your way. So preference sheet meeting. It's 3 p.m., 21 hours before charter. It was 11 a.m. before at 25 hours before charter. What? Go back and look. I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at them as I write it down, as I watch the show, and I'm like, this isn't right. Yeah, that's really bad. Like, it's really bad. Anyway, whatever, anyway, who am I? Charter 5, it's a shorter charter, and we have a founder and editor of a magazine. I couldn't catch the name of the magazine. Mm -hmm. But they're here to celebrate women's empowerment. Carl's going to love that. Mm. He he loves an all-girl charter and he, especially women's empowerment. Doesn't he? Uh, dinner is all white things. And uh, oh. <laughs> 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 
We've said oh, it's a white themed dinner so many times. I thought I'd just mix I it know, up. But like, <laughs> oh and breakfast is to order. But please note, Lance, what's the note about the primary? <laughs> the primary doesn't eat eggs outside. What the actual fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> Jack's good. He's like, did something happen to her? <laughs> I'd like to know that too, Jack. Did you see Sandy's face? No. Oh, fuck. It's worth it. It's like she just goes, I'm speechless. She doesn't eat eggs outside. That's a first. Like, doesn't Jack say, how does she even know this? Yes. <laughs> like, did a bird come? Did a seagull come and take an egg? <laughs> They also want to get off the boat to explore Portofino, which is something that they've never done and something I didn't know that Sandy then explains that the docking into Portofino is, like, insane. They're small boats. It's like a highway for tiny boats and she's going to have to reverse in. It's a super tight slip. Oh, super tight slip. <laughs> this is why she's the med captain. So Jack has a quick check-in with Toomey and says, look, I know you're down, someone, I'm here to support you. And then he says to Cameron, but fucking Kyle, he would cause drama in an empty room with a mop bucket. He's a fucking rat, he says. Oh, he does. He's not holding anything back. He's had enough, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. And do you know what, though? Like, imagine if Kyle had a chef on board that was like previous charter chefs that just went off mm. tap at nothing, mm. like nothing. You don't know how to hold a plate. Fuck you. Jack's not going to do that. Jack's just quiet. Take that, Kyle, He and doesn't. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. It's morning. Yes. And Max and Sandy have a chat. He says, look, I'm ready to leave. Did you see her recoil? They were just having a chat. How's it going? Well, it's because of how he... Approached the chat. He just threw it in there. Well, he was saying, he was really, he goes, I was really excited to join this boat and see all the money that everyone's making and and it's clear to me now that I'm going to leave. <laughs> yes. Like it's like great, great, great. Bye. Like, I've got to go now. <laughs> she said, what? No. Sandy explains to Max that they only have two and a half weeks left and they won't be able to replace him. We don't want to lose you, Max. You're an asset. Then she pulls out of, this is Sandy Leadership 101 out of her back pocket. Hey, Max, when we go to anchor, I'll let you drive. How's that? <laughs> she knows exactly how to pick Max up. It's because he's like three years <laughs> old. You want to drive the toy car? She has never said that to anyone. N not in Max's position. No, only a, a lead or a bosun. Yes. Yeah. And then he tells us, look, I'm not happy. He's My What? He's not getting his Eiffel Towers. His Eiffel Towers. His body is telling him no. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, he's going to give it to the end of the charter and see if if it improves. And then we get his little Eiffel Tower clock. I loved it. Ding. It's at six. His Eiffel Tower is down. Yeah. Sandy shows to me her new stew. She's green, but she's got some hospitality experience, small boat experience. So here we go. Here is a new stew. Lara is first to greet her. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. <laughs> We've got some blonde, long, beautiful hair. She's gorgeous. And an increase in Max's Eiffel Tower meter. Her Ding. name is Lily. She was a <laughs> Will this be enough for him to stay? Ah, uh, yes. Apparently so. <laughs> it's the first thing I thought. Max is back. He's excited. He's singing. Lily, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Toomey meets Lily and she's lovely to her. Different to Nat's greeting. Well, she had inside intel, didn't she? Exactly. So Lily is a Londoner. And she's got most of her hospitality experience comes from big events. She's from Windsor. Like you can't get more mm -hmm. than that. Upper echelon. Um, she's actually shooting herself. Yeah, but I automatically like her. I think she seems like a space cadet, but in a really fun way. Toomey gives her the uniform and tells her to do a quick vacuum straight away. Straight in. And Kyle is struggling. 
sitting on the toilet, folding the toilet paper and all the all the things are going through his head. Yeah, he's reminiscing about his chat with Sandy. He doesn't want Captain to have the perception of him and he's got to fix it, he says. Meanwhile, Jack and Lara are in the galley and Jack's like saying, look, I'm happy for you guys that you've got a great team and you've got a good vibe. You guys are all good. Kyle will not even look me in the eye, he says. I'm in the bridge with Kyle apologising. <laughs> Here's Kyle. From the bottom of my heart. It's then that I switched off. <laughs> he apologises <laughs> for what he's done and the way he reacted. Quickly followed on with, I also apologised to Nat. Mm. And that went well. This is what we said, remember? I said the only reason he went in there is because he knew he needed to have that apology down in his hand for this conversation that yeah, was coming. Right. That's what he's very strategic. Lucky he did it, right? Because now he can tell Captain Sandy he apologised. And let's remember the apology. And that's like, it's 2am, Kyle. I'm so tired. Please don't. Yeah. But he went in there and sat on the end of that bed and did it anyway mm -hmm. against her wishes. Yeah. He also knows this is exactly what Sandy needs to hear. When someone fucks up, she needs ownership yeah. and an apology. Yeah. He knows her well. He's obviously watched the show. And Sandy says, thank you. I appreciate that. That's exactly what I needed to hear. Yeah, I, uh, let's skip over how I feel. Mm -hmm. It's guest arrival. Uh, welcome drinks. Toomey takes them on a tour. They want lunch within the hour. And one of the guests asks if they can iron underwear. Have you ever? No. Never. You've already got a hot patootie. As soon as you put those pants on, it's going to iron out any wrinkle that might be in any undie. And as soon as How you fart. How baggy are your undies that they need ironing anyway? Even if they were baggy, why are you ironing undies? It's just so... Arbitrary. Yeah, and, and also just like, are you just doing this so that you've got someone to be like your servant? Yeah. Like, you know, do you, can, uh, excuse me, can you iron the underwear? Like, I don't want anyone looking at my underwear. No. <laughs> Poor Sandy. She gets everyone looking at her underwear. <laughs> they undock, prep for lunch. The deck crew are on point and Sandy reminds them to stay this sharp for Portofino. Mm. Lily's mm. asked Kyle to help her show her the laundry and Kyle gets the iron and explains that it needs a minute to heat up and Lily's like, oh, that's an iron. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was in that moment that we realise how green Lily is. Yes. If that was me as a second stew, I'd be like, okay, this is the laundry. I'm just going to give you the rundown of the systems in the laundry because if you don't know what an iron is, then I'm just going to have to show you how we work and what we do, what we usually do with guest clothes, where they go, the dryer, where you hang it, how we do it, all of the process of the laundry. My eyes just glazed over. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what Lily what will Lily do does. for the next two and a half weeks. But don't you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. I'm just thinking, why does Lily say that she's a rare breed of sushi? She just is a loosey-goosey, and I don't know what she meant by that, but I, I just love her. I didn't know what she meant by that either. I find her really funny. I think we're going to get some entertainment out of her, finally. I hope she sticks around long enough to yeah, true. show I her which rare breed she is. <laughs> Teriyaki or <laughs> Kingfish Cucumber Tuna fish Anyway, Kyle's straight up to, to me saying Oh my god, Lily doesn't know how to steam It's her first time steaming And they're both like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god Whereas what you could have done, Kyle Is gone up to Toomey and say Look, she's less experienced than we thought Someone's going to have to spend time with her Yeah, I've just taken her through a quick whip around the laundry. But he didn't. Nat would have done that. Yes, Nat would have done it. En route to Portofino. That was very Aussie. En route to Portofino. <laughs> <laughs> Is um, it weird that Australians put on an even more Australian accent? <laughs> yes. Depends who you're talking to. I can go straight to Ocker if I'm oh. around some ox. Mate. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> Oh, it's so bad. Okay, we're going to Portofino. Kyle and Jack are in the galley. Kyle's waiting for a dish to go serve for lunch and it is radio silence. 
And Carl was like, I can feel Jack holding me as the sole person accountable for pushing bunny ears and that off the boat. I did enjoy that as Carl was delivering this quinoa salad that he mentioned to the primary, egg free. <laughs> and she says, never outside. So bizarre. I thought it was just eggs. I didn't realise it was oh, we're still with the egg. no egg in anything. Like what if he wants to make a souffle? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is she going to say, I'll only eat that indoors, thank you? What if it's even just a chocolate cake? How severe is this aversion to outdoor eggs? I don't know. Can she have chickens? (laughs) Would the chickens be inside the house? (laughs) Does she collect collect the chickens' eggs outside? I don't think even if she had chickens, she would be collecting their (laughs) eggs. Where are the chickens stored? (laughs) Oh. Can she go to a market and buy eggs outdoors? No, she can't. <laughs> She's got to go down aisle three where the chickens are. <laughs> I mean the eggs that are already in the cart. What if it's a birthday party and there's a cake outside? She's not eating it. The limitations. We don't have anything like that. Do you have any weird things that I don't know about? There's many weird things, but I can eat eggs outside. Would you, I think you can eat anything outside. Is there anything that you won't eat outside? No. Yeah. I've got that question for you, Lens. Maybe unless it was set up really nicely like a cheese fondue. If you'd like to support us, go to the link in the show notes and buy us a coffee or subscribe. It's a small donation that goes towards helping us cover the costs to make our podcast. What's with the caveat? So you'll eat one outside if it's not set up nicely? No, if if it's set up nicely and it's like a whole situation with tablescape and everything. You'll eat it outside, but otherwise, no. Why not? (laughs) You're scared of a fly landing in your fondue. (laughs) I mean, that's a real hazard here. (laughs) Or or mozzie. Or mozzie. No, I really don't give a shit. Oh, no, there's nothing. Okay. All right, let's move on from the outdoor egg situation. I'm at Max anchoring the boat. Let's keep Max on the boat by giving him some fun things to do, like drive it. Yeah. He's pretty happy now. He turns it because it feels like he's moving the whole cosmos. Yeah. All his titties were popping out. (laughs) Is what he said. All of them. Is that what he said? All his titties are popping out. What does that mean? They're erect. He's excited. They're popping. How many titties has Max got? (laughs) Well... Maybe he's a three-nipple man. No. (laughs) We'll see later. (laughs) Oh, yes. Okay. Debt crew, get all the toys out. Wait. Huh? The Eiffel Tower meter just went up another notch. He's getting close. He's getting close. Debt crew, get your toys out. They get them out. God, they're working hard. They put this out, this out, this out, and then crickets. Luca comes up to them and says, the guests are just like lying and tanning and He's like, so we've got the slide, and they went, no, no, not doing that. We've got the sea bob, like the sea bob's really fun. No, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. No, thanks. I'm not swimming right now. I don't want the slide. One pulls a hat over her head as he's talking. Like, yeah, no. He's really taken aback. He doesn't know how to deal with these guests. And even Lara as well, down on the thing, Lara's like, <laughs> what do we do? Coffee. Luca says, <laughs> get a coffee. So Luca like slowly backs away from that situation and he's like, fuck, okay. We just did all this work for nothing. Yeah, well, it's so not normal because once they anchor, that's what everyone does. Especially on a one-day charter. Mate, we'd be down the slide. Anyway, Sandy's like, no, 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 no. These guests need to have fun. Luca, bring the energy and sell the toys. And Sandy does it. She's like, that is really fun. Get on there. Max will get on there with you. Go on, Max. Max goes down. Even Luca. Luca will show you how to do it. They just need a little bit of encouraging. One guest, I can't be in the heat too long. <laughs> you're not going to be in the heat. You're going to be in the water. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> like, I, She was actually concerned. I can't be in the heat too long. 
she should well, have. Well, that's your job to manage that. Why didn't she pick Antarctica then? You know when you're hot. There's plenty of cruises there. Get out and go back inside. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really critical tonight. Um, Sorry, everyone. <laughs> they, they're they having fun now. They're on jet skis. Luca tells us, I needed that motivation from Sandy. He is a good leader, but you can see he's still learning every day from Sandy. They pick up Anchor to head to Portofino and Jess is making a coffee. And Carl says, what are you doing? She says, making coffee for chef. He says, well, I already do the dishes. What, now I've got to make coffee? Jess says, you know. Team morale. I'm like, yes, Jess, mm. I like that. And Carl's like, team morale, don't come and bullshit me about team morale. This is where Toomey goes, what, still now? Toomey thought with Nat gone, all of her problems were solved, but now she's like, oh, fuck, that really didn't solve anything. Carl is still on one and he's still a problem for me. Yeah, he's, he's just found a different person to have in his sights, which is Jack. Yeah, and now we're backing down the narrow slip. She needs to turn the boat. 180. And then reverse it. And while she's doing it, this is the hardest docking, the port boat waves them in and there are small boats everywhere. Yeah. Like she's incredible. There's heaps of people watching. Mm -hmm. It would be amazing to see. You've got all these teeny tiny boats in this small little inlet and this huge boat. Backing it up. Yacht, super yacht. (laughs) <laughs> and it just comes in and I'm like, oh, my God, and it's Sandy. Like, I'd be videoing too. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, everyone's there. It's just, it would be amazing to watch. They don't have ground lines either in Portofino, so they have to drop both anchors and they've never done this before. No, I thought that was fascinating. I was like, wait, so they've got to drop two anchors simultaneously and then they're kind of going to drag on those anchors and then they get the spring lines on and then they're they're in. Yes, they are buzzed. You, you wouldn't you be? And I was like, fucking A. And Sandy comes out. Yeah. And tells them how amazing they did. Like that, it's not just a little radio, good job, deck team. No. It's like I'm coming down to actually see you and physically say to you, that was incredible. Like she said before they started this, I rely solely on them for this docking. It was pretty amazing. And for Luca, who... Was remember not the bosun originally? No, no, he's done. He's done good, and they've done so good that when the guests get off to do a tour of Portofino town, Sandy's like, "Right, deck team, I'm taking you for ice cream to celebrate." <laughs> I loved it, love, love, loved it. Sandy's treating them all like kindergarten kids, you know, like Max. Hey, Max. Yeah, you want to drive the boat? Yeah, Max. Yeah. You want ice cream? Hey, Max. hey, everyone, you did so good. <laughs> Let's have an ice cream. I think it's mostly about Max. I know she's thinking, how can I pick Max up? Ice cream. It's the sweetest, loveliest thing. It's the smallest thing but makes a huge impact. As soon as he's got that ice cream on his lips, he says, guys, I'm staying. (laughs) Sandy's like, yes. And I'll be like, you can have a double scoop maxi pad. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we're laughing about it how little it took to get Max to stay. But he does say, look, as soon as I said I was leaving, I realised how much everyone loved me and they (laughs) rallied. They rallied me and they told me not to go and so I'm not going to go. And I thought, fucking touche. That's not what happened to Nat. That's what Nat wanted. She didn't get it. Yes, very good point. We've now had three people say, I'm leaving. Look at how the deck team rallied around Max. Look at how the interior team went, like, off you go. Yeah. And who was the third person? I've forgotten. Kyle. Kyle. Turned around in a heartbeat with some encouragement from, from his Tammy. job. Exactly. Anyway, Max came in. He wasn't working well. Instead of going, we've got to get rid of him, they came up with a way to turn him around and they absolutely did. Yeah. Nat. Didn't have that issue because she worked really well, but she did have issues with the way uh, she was working with her team. That wasn't addressed. That wasn't dealt with from any of her leaders. No. The reason for that, as we all know, is it's because Kyle planted that seed with Toomey and it was never recoverable. Correct. And so that was the problem. I also liked while they were having ice cream, Sandy asked Haley, I think, what'd you get? What'd you get? Haley's like vanilla and coffee. 
Luca says, I got brain freeze. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, that should be a flavor. Yes. Why hasn't anyone made an ice cream flavor called brain freeze? Or, or a slushy. Yes. Um, it's 4.30 and the deck team are back on their boat after their little ice cream experience and now I want one. Especially an Italian gelato. Would Should we do that as part of our Christmas party? Mm. Let's do it first before we hit the margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy's wondering where her underwear is. She tries to f- go down to the laundry. She tries to find people. Then she's like, she's going to have a bit of a play here. She gets a radio. She's like, uh, Kyle, I just want to make sure my undies and my socks make it back to my cabin. The way the whole crew reacted to this call on the radio was his Derical. I loved it. Lily, fuck, was that me? Was that me? Was that for me? Was it for me? Max is like clambering out of the bed going, Captain Underpants, <laughs> Captain's Underpants. <laughs> Everyone's just scrambling. <laughs> Where the fuck are the underpants? <laughs> Kyle grabs a few pairs. These yours? These yours? These yours? <laughs> Kyle managed to locate some undies and socks and take them to Sandy. What did you say about Sandy's undies? Well, of course they were sensible. Of course. I just thought they were quite small. She's teeny tiny. Yeah. I mean, mine would have taken up three times the space. Oh, mate, you could parachute. (laughs) 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 Oh, you got me good. Oh, Lily comes up to Sandy in a million miles an hour. I put it in the wash and I didn't and I didn't take it out. And, 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 he, and Sandy's just like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Like Sandy is so fun, this charter. Yeah, she is. She's good. Kyle's in the galley with Jack. Wondering why he's still getting the silent treatment. He <laughs> thinks people are talking behind his back now. The paranoia has set in. Yeah, he's actually very insecure, isn't he? And he says uh, this isn't sustainable for the rest of the charter. This is where obviously in his mind he decides, right, well, I need to do something about this because this situation, this silent treatment, not sustainable for me. I'm not going to take it. He can't handle it. No. And he can't open with a, hey, look, I can sense that you're still upset about Nat leaving. Let's, like, there's none of that. That's not on even... No. In his wheelhouse of ways to communicate. No, he's strategizing again. Mm. Yeah. It's the white party. Table looks amazing. Mm. All you need to know that there's no eggs. Chef does great. They love the food. Mm. While they're enjoying their meal, Toomey radios to Jess to see how the cabins are going. They're going okay, but this is where Toomey explains that Lily can't do cabins on her own. Jess has to be with her, which takes Jess away from Toomey. Now, my point from this didn't they all say when Nat texted at the dinner table and Lara received that and she said to everybody Nat's leaving they all said oh we'll be fine we'll be fine with three yeah we'll be fine with three good point lanes because now they've got four yeah so even if they didn't have the fourth stew one of those three would be down in the fucking cabins (laughs) and even if that fourth stew is so green it's still an extra hand yeah while i'm doing this you do that and we'll do it together for two nights then you're on your own and i'll check the guests have asked for a couple of guys to strip some chippendale action please toomey loves this would you do that would you ask for the guys to strip no yeah no i don't think i would either i don't think it's fair no, I just... You're, you're doing a job and you're serving people and you're in hospitality. I didn't come here for a strip tease. No. You're not getting paid for that. No, like I wouldn't go, do it. Yeah, no. I would just admire from afar. Yeah. I've never even been to a male strip show. It's not my vibe. So as we know, Luca has previous experience with Down Under. Oh, my God. You know what? This stripping situation was so tame. Yeah. The only thing they took off was their shirts. Fine, they can do whatever they want. If you have not seen Below Deck Down Under, <laughs> please go back and watch what they made those guys do and oh, what the bosun did to the woman who requested. The stri- <laughs> they tied her up with ropes. <laughs> they put a banana in her mouth yeah. and some whipped cream. Like it went way beyond. Yeah, gagging. Yes. <laughs> 
This was nothing. Oh, you just got your shirt off. Captain Jason had budgie smugglers on. Yeah. If you want to see some budgies. And if you don't know what that is, go have a look. Google budgie smugglers. Yes. Banana hammock. <laughs> so, sorry, Lance. Let's go back. Everyone's excited for the Chippendales. The energy's up. Even Jack's been roped in. He'll take one for the team. <laughs> and they even go, oh, even the chef's up here. <laughs> like. <laughs> But what did you notice about Luca's torso? What? He's got a fucking Scorpio tat. Does he? How did we miss it? We talked about it last week. We talked about him having a Scorpio eating, eating the monarch, monarch butterfly. On his ribs is a huge scorpion tat. Go back and watch He's it. He's so mystical. <laughs> so that's how everyone knows he's a Scorpio, obviously. We're the last to find out. Anyway, it's all quite tame. Um, Wears them out and they go to bed. Yeah. Jess jumps in with Luca for a cuddle. Now, are they using the word cuddle for something else, Lanes? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to check because I wasn't sure because I thought, oh, that's sweet, a little cuddle. But then he has to remake the bed, so I thought, oh, it must have been a pretty vigorous cuddle. (laughs) (laughs) I I didn't know there was a remake of the bed. (laughs) Yeah. Now I feel a bit sticky. Because Max comes in and he's like, oh, fuck. Then Jess leaves. Luca's like, no, I've just got to. Remake the bed. It's 7 a.m. <laughs> Max's eyeful is back. Cock a doodle do. <laughs> wakey, wakey, hands off, snakey. He is happy. He's here to stay. The breakfast special. Hilarious. It's an omelette. Jack, why did you make that the <laughs> he special? Gives, he don't give a shit. He could have done waffles. He could have done I waffles. Don't, I don't think these ladies want waffles. What the fuck else are you going to have on a super yacht that's not eggs outside? Well, you, you could have had pastries, fruit yeah, but they're platter. Not, they're, no, they're not eating that. Yes, fruit platter, but they're not. They're going to want more than that, no. like as your meal. You'd be wanting eggs, Benny. Yes. So it's an omelette any way you want. And the primary. Yeah, I'll take it at the bar, thanks. Do you think she was pissed off by it? She didn't really, didn't really seem it. I imagine she experiences it quite a lot that she's got to go indoors. Yeah. <laughs> And even one of her guests said, so what is it? We finally get the story. Yes. And she says, like, was it something from your childhood or something? (laughs) Where's your egg trauma from? (laughs) Okay, so tell us, what's the reason for the egg thing? Well, she doesn't like the eggs to touch the air. Because it's a foul taste. (laughs) Foul? (laughs) Get it? Yes. And then as she says that, they panned to a seagull sitting on the roof. (laughs) So here's my thing, Lance. Mm. Okay. So if you have eggs inside, they're still touching the air. (laughs) (laughs) I'm fascinated by this egg thing. But okay, let's move on. So they leave Portofino and to me that was more stressful than when they backed in. Oh, yeah. There was a lot of people just going really close to them. It's like an M1. (laughs) Yeah, like New York taxis, I think she said. Yes. Lily in the laundry. Google has let her down. That's like um, Cluedo. It was Lily (laughs) in the laundry with a candlestick. She says, I even Googled before I came on. And once again, Lance, Lily, you will learn everything you need to know through watching 18 seasons of Below Deck. (laughs) Oh, Carl's really? wondering if they can put her in the luggage room because she's no good in the laundry. And now they're getting ready to anchor again. The deck crew on a one-day charter, they've worked really hard. Yeah. How many times have they anchored and unanchored? Many. Many. Put all the deck toys out and get them back in. Strip. The beds. <laughs> <laughs> That's only one deck team member. It's 12.45 guest departure. Props to the deck team, says Sandy, and they get a pretty decent tip for 24 hours. Yes. 18 grand. Yeah. Which is? 12.50? Yeah, per person. Euro. For 24 hours. So they're happy with the tip and it's 5.15 and they're getting ready to go out. Pretty quickly they're at the dinner table. Yeah. And they're ordering drinks. And uh, this was an interesting start to dinner. Kyle asked the waiter for a double Mexican meal and Jack says, are you sure? So already oh. a little bit of bait. And they have dinner. And then we see this conversation between Jack and Lily. And um, she says, so who are you closest to? 
And he says, well, it was Nat and she just left. Lily wants to know why Nat just left. And he says, ah, look, it doesn't matter. It's bad to fill you with all the negative stuff when you just come in. Great job, Jack. Tick, Kyle is listening to everything with a face on him. It was so smug. Just sinister, in my opinion. It had a a look on him like you're ready to pounce. Yeah. You're just waiting for an opportunity. You're creating stuff in your mind. It's been built over the, the day like it, the same as how he always is. He builds things up, he waits, and then it just explodes. And yeah. it's usually not the case. I love how Lily's, oh, I couldn't give a fuck. She same. just says, oh, okay, so you're not close to the interior then. Jack's like, nut, nah, and she goes, well, everyone in the interior is up their own ass. <laughs> I love it. It's like, yes, call it how you see it, Lily. <laughs> Jax also is like, I love the honesty. We're from England. We can take it. The banter. The banter's a bit better. Someone doesn't like that. So Kyle says, your banter is above us apparently, so have your banter. And Jack immediately turns to Lily and is like, so is it better? She's like, yep. (laughs) And then she, she says something like, I think everyone's banter is really just a good adaptation of ours. Yeah. And Kyle says to Toomey or whoever's up his end, they're playing games because I can see what she's talking about. She's talking about something else. And she's not. Lily says, wait, what? What happened? Yeah. Lily has no idea what he's talking about. None. And then he says, well, he wasn't so brave without you, but now he is. I need to take a wee-wee. All I'm thinking is common denominator. Again. Toomey can feel it, I think. She's kind of had a face on her like, oh, my God, here we go again. Yeah. Here we go again. You're doing it again. Then we get our big coming up on later in the season. There's a lot happening. I put it up on our stories. Great. Go and check that out. And we will see you next week. See ya. Thanks for listening. Bye. If you look at how the deck team turned Matt from – if you look at how <laughs> fucking hell. If you look You're at You're having <laughs> a lot of problems with their names tonight. If you look at what m- fuck. Look at what Lara and Luca did. What are we looking at? For Max. <laughs> Don't make me start over because I just got it right. You're gonna have to because I just fucked it for you. How do we know that the reason for that is it'd be cool? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got my disease? Yeah, you're sketching. <laughs>